Good morning. Today we look at uh, 1 Kings 3 through 5, uh, the continuing story of Solomon as he has been uh, enthroned, ordained, established as king. Uh, and um, I'm just going to, I'll combine tomorrow and Monday's readings on Monday and figure we'll get caught back up again that way. Uh, tomorrow again on a Sunday morning, we have worship at Mabel and Sutton at nine o'clock and our saviors in McHenry at 1030. Um, Sutton will be live at seven at nine o'clock on uh, Facebook live. Um, chapter three of first Kings begins with Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh king of Egypt and he took one of Pharaoh's daughters and he brought her to the city of David to I mean he took her I mean that mean I, I guess that means he took her to be a wife I would I would assume, and, and, um, but he was building his house, and it says that he and the people continued to offer sacrifices in the high places because the temple wasn't yet built. And so then it was that um, uh, as, as Solomon was offering a sacrifice at one time, um, God appeared or God spoke to him by a dream at night, it says, you know, and and God asked, or, you know, he said to Solomon, you know, ask what you will. And we know the story. Solomon asked for wisdom. You know, he says, give your servant an understanding mind to govern your people, to be able to discern between good and evil, because who can govern this great number of people as you have? And verse 10 says, it pleased the Lord that Solomon asked for wisdom. And so he gave him the wise and discerning mind, and he also gave him wealth and good health. And, you know, both, both riches and honor all over your life. No other king shall ever compare to you. And um, Solomon then awoke and realized it was a dream. But also that, you know, the dream was real. And just shortly after this then, uh, verse 16 later, two women who were prostitutes. Women of no accord. I mean, to think about that. Two women or prostitutes come to the king to ask for the king to make this decision. And again, a well-known story how they, the one woman had, had a child. And three days later, uh, the other woman had a child and this child died. And so she switched the babies and took the living child. And the mother of the living child knew they had been switched. And they come to King Solomon. And, you know, they both claim to be the mother. And Solomon knows, well, one of them has got to be lying. So he calls for a sword. And he's, you know, gonna, he's going to cut the baby in two and give half to each one. You, we know this story. It's just a wonderful example of, of his wisdom. Because the one who is the real mother says, no, give him to the other woman. You know, and the woman who is not the mother says, oh, just go ahead and cut him in half. You know, I mean... Which one? Which one was really caring about the baby? Well, Solomon knew that the real mother would rather have her child live, even if it meant to be with that other woman. And so this was one of the first examples for all of the people of the wisdom of Solomon, of his ability to figure out what's right and what's wrong, you know, to be the, the truth seeker. Um, and then chapter 4 you know, King Solomon was king over all of Israel, the combined north uh, kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom. And he appointed different officials over all of these different areas. And and in verse 3, it talks about uh, a couple of secretaries. And then Jehoshaphat, son of El uh, Ahalud, was a recorder. And then talks about others, and you know, one Azariah, the son of Nathan, the, the prophet, was there, and and goes on and names a lot of people. And then in, he also uh, puts other, twelve other officials in charge of different areas of Israel, and and we get down reading in there, and well, there's another Jehoshaphat, but it's Jehoshaphat, uh, son of Perua in Iskar. So it's it's a different Jehoshaphat that way, and you know, so we have. Similar names, of course, they're similar names. Names of many that are the same that way. Um, and they, uh, 
they rule, helped Joseph rule the people, rule, you know, they're kind of, they're governors of these different areas. And Solomon's, you know, then it talks about Solomon's provisions for each day. And so you know that, they, I mean, he had a lot of people that he was providing meals and providing everything for with the numbers of, you know, of everything that's there. And, um, but it also talks about, you know, he ruled from the Euphrates you know, over to the kings of Euphrates and, and he had peace on all sides. There was peace with the Philistines and, you know, so that the Israelites weren't at battle. They weren't at war with anyone. So they had the manpower then to build the temple is, you know, the big thing that way. And uh, again, verse 29, God gave wisdom. God gave Solomon very great wisdom, discernment, breadth of understanding. You know, so that his wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all others. And, you know, people came from all of the nations to hear of the wisdom of Solomon. And, you know, the book of Proverbs is mostly, they're mostly written by Solomon. You know, the wisdom of Solomon. And the book of Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon. And he wrote, you know, the, as we look through the Psalms, you know, many... Many of the Psalms are a date by David, but there are also quite a few that, that Solomon wrote. And, you know, songs and different things that are attributed to Solomon within our Bible. And, you know, people came with, with questions and just, you know, to to witness the, the, the sheer wisdom and, and everything of Solomon that way. Verse chapter 5, uh, the, the king of Tyre sends servants to Solomon when he heard that he was now king in place of his father David because uh, the king of Tyre and King David had always had uh, good relations. And this king of Tyre finds out that, you know, they're going to start building this temple. And he said that, you know, he said, I will provide the, the you know, the common cedars and the terebinth trees and all of those things uh, and you send some men to help cut them and, and ship them and get them back and forth, and we will make provisions for you. And so uh, within this, Solomon uh, had 30,000 workers, 10,000 each month would go up to Tyre and help harvest and move these trees, and the other 20,000 were at home with their families. So and then, so each month, um, out of every three months, you know, you'd be home for two, which... You know, I think that was a fair and equitable working situation that way. They weren't gone all the time, but yet they had the responsibilities. And and Solomon was, you know, intelligent enough to say that, you know, they're not going to be happy if they're gone a long time. But a month they can handle. And then they would have two months with their families. And, um, you know, verse 13, he says, he conscripted forced labor out of all of Israel. And... You know, there was, you know, conscripting forced labor and, you know, a lot of the armies were conscripted that way as well. Um, I'm sure that some maybe uh, volunteered, but for the most part, uh, the workers were were conscripted. They were made to do this uh, duty for the, for the kingdom and for God. And... Um, you know, verse 15 of chapter 5 says, Solomon also had 70,000 laborers, 80,000 stone cutters in the hill country. And, the, and then he had 3,300 supervisors having charge over all of the work. And, and you think about that. He's got 30,000 people going up to, to Tyre, um, you know, cutting, I mean, 10,000 at a time, you know, cutting the trees and preparing them and bringing them down and and these stone cutters and other laborers, you know, he's got, you know, there's between the, that's 150,000 more that he's got that are laborers and stone cutters. The laborers are working on assembling the everything. And so you've got to have a good, a good crew of overseers, you know, of supervisors that way. And, and to think about that, you know, he had 3,300 supervisors. That's, you know, it's, it's, it just boggles my mind, you know, the numbers of people. And, and Israel isn't a huge country. I mean, it's, it is what it, you know, is today. You know, it's, it's not a huge country. But there were many people there. And that was, you know, part of God's promise to, to Abraham and to Moses. And, you know, that your peoples would be more numerous than the sands. And 
So we just continue to see the, the promises of God coming through. And, and you know, so far, King Solomon seems to be doing okay and, and following God and is, uh, and everything, you know, there's peace in Israel, which hasn't happened for, you know, the, the whole of King David's reign. It seemed like they were at battle with someone, but now they are at peace and 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 begin to prosper and it is you know the lord's favor is upon them